So in today's video, we are going to be covering some first day beginner tips for Vanguard multiplayer. And these tips are going to include some best settings, best weapons to use, how to level up faster, as well as some general tips on how to get better and how to improve at the game. And if you guys do find the video helpful, make sure to leave a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. It shows me that I'm doing something right. And make sure to subscribe to make your way back to the channel with notifications on. Join Turbo Nation today, make it official, and let's get on with the video. All right, so the first thing that I do want to talk about is my settings and some advice that I have for settings now i'm not going to go too in depth with the settings i'm just going to go over some general explanations of why these settings are very important if you guys want to see a much more in-depth video make sure to check out my best settings video for vanguard and those will give you pretty much everything you need to know about what i'm going to be talking about today but as far as the things that i'm going to be talking about today these are pretty much just the most important things that you are going to be concerned about since it's going to be your first day on vanguard so the main thing we want to look at here on the controller tab is our sensitivity finding your best sensitivity is basically as simple as just going into a private match and playing around with the different sensitivities you know playing against some bots as well and see how well that you can go ahead and get a much more accurate shot control your aim and sensitivity that's really the best way that i can explain it but for most people you're probably going to fall within that four to eight sensitivity range for both your horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity and like i said i also do have a specific aiming and accuracy tips video that you should definitely check out all you need to know is in that video now the next thing i do want to talk about is the ADS sensitivity multiplier so this one i generally recommend going at 0 0.90 or 0 0.8 or even 0 0.70 really kind of just depends on what kind of controller you have and also whether or not you have tall or short sticks because some people do use control freaks which is actually going to make the ads sensitivity multiplier a little bit different from person to person so this one like i said generally recommend 0 0.70 8 or 9 but for me personally i have a sweet spot of 0.80 this is something that you can just find out by just testing it out yourself all right so next up i do recommend this button layout preset of tactical flip now this is something i've been using in every single call of duty and the main reason why you want to use this is so that you can use your aim down sight as well as your fire weapon buttons to be flipped so we're using l1 and r1 instead of the triggers on the back mainly because it's a lot more responsive and a lot more instant so this is going to give you a big advantage in gunfights there is going to be less input lag as well so that's why we are using these flipped settings here now another reason why is because our melee and our crouch are going to be flipped normally you have to press circle to crouch but in this case we're going to be using our right stick and just pressing on it the main advantage of that is so that we don't have to take our fingers off the controller at all so this is just going to give you an advantage versus your opponent and most people find these settings very very useful for gunfights now as far as aim response curve type goes I normally just stick with standard. You don't really need to go fancy here. Standard works just fine. And moving on to the controller vibration, I generally also recommend to turn this off for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't need to worry about being distracted by your controller vibrating while you're in a gunfight, and that's just gonna mess you up. Also, it's going to preserve the life of your battery, depending on if you are using a wireless controller. So that's why I like having the controller vibration off. It just helps you concentrate on the task at hand, and that is to concentrate on your gunfight as much as possible. You don't want your aim messed up because your controller is vibrating and then now you got yourself concentrating on something that is far less important than what you are trying to accomplish in game. Now as far as dead zones go, dead zone is something that you're going to have to figure out on your own. It's as simple as just going into a private match and making these settings all the way to zero. So we're going to put the settings all the way to zero for the left stick minimum input and all the way to zero for the right stick minimum input. So what this essentially does is that it's going to make your character move on its own without you touching the controller. So obviously from this point, you just want to keep increasing the input and then the less that your character starts to move, then that's when you want to keep that dead zone input. Again, I do have an in-depth video talking about aiming settings and all that good stuff. Now, as far as target aim assist goes, of course, you do want to have this on. And there are a couple different aim assists that are going to be available, which is the rotational as well as the aim down sight assist. So basically, the rotational is going to follow an enemy. When you're close enough, your gun is going to rotate around that person when you are just not aimed down sights. And then also with the aim assist slowdown, that's going to be especially helpful at longer ranges when you're aiming down sight and you're moving your crosshairs above your opponent. You're going to notice that your aim is going to slow down. So obviously, this is why we 
we want target aim assist to be on. One little tip that I do have here for the movement is turn your automatic sprint on. So I specifically have mine on automatic tactical sprint. The reason why is because this is going to preserve the lifespan of your left thumbstick. You know, we're used to just pushing down on the left stick to be able to sprint around the map. Whereas this one, all you have to do is push forward and your character will instantly start sprinting. So this is not only going to save the lifespan of your thumbsticks from wear and tear, but also your actual thumbs. So it's going to allow you to play the game a lot longer. Probably one of the biggest mistakes that beginners make, especially that are new to the franchise, is that you have your world motion blur as well as weapon motion blur on. So you definitely want to have these off because as you can see from the example on the picture shown here, you are potentially going to be missing out on opponents that you didn't even know were there because everything is just blurred out when you're moving so fast and it being a fast paced arcade type of shooter you definitely want to have as clear of a vision as possible when you're moving around the map all right and as far as field of view goes this is all personal preference but generally speaking the farther fov that you have the much more surface area you're going to be able to see while you're playing in game obviously you're going to be able to see a lot more enemies around the world when you're playing the game but the biggest issue with this for most beginners is that your target is going to be a lot smaller so this is something that you generally need to increase in increments instead of just going straight to 120 fov that's something that i do recommend so start off in maybe five or ten increments and work your way up so this is going to be a huge advantage as well because it's going to give you that visual illusion that you are going to have less recoil but also in reality it doesn't actually give you less recoil it just helps you psychologically and it's going to result in a much more accurate shot now as far as audio goes this is generally the settings that i usually use in every single call of duty for me personally i like to have my music volume off just so that i can concentrate on the game because sometimes you do want to hear enemy call outs or also your own teammate call outs as well as for footsteps people reloading you know all these audio cues are going to help give you an advantage if you're really immersing yourself in the game but you can't really do that if you got music playing super loud in your ear and it's just super annoying in my opinion so i have music off but all the settings here i find to be very successful in my opinion all right now one last tip that i do want to share with you about the settings that i find is very important is your hud elements so these elements as you see is the picture here you basically want your minimap and everything else as small and compact as possible because if you're playing on a bigger tv it's going to be a lot harder for you to keep an eye on your minimap while at the same time be focused what's in front of you so instead of just you know turning your actual head to the left to check out your minimap all you have to do is just move your eyes minimally and then you can still see what's going on in front of you so at this point you should be able to just minimize this as much as you possibly can and these settings are going to vary just based on your monitor size or if you're playing on a tv depending on what size it is as well but the main objective is to get it as small as you possibly can without really obstructing your view of course of what's going on in front of you and also the mini map shape is going to be square as well mainly because there is a lot more real estate versus having a circle mini map all right so when it comes to weapons and which is the best weapon to use normally i recommend for beginners to just start off with the weapons that you unlock at first and then just stick with them and just level them up throughout so in this case for assault rifles it would definitely be the stg 44 and for submachine guns it's going to be the mp40 also another little trick here is that if you are leveling up tiers in the battle pass or you have special blueprints unlocked for example like the mp40 mine is only level one here so i obviously don't have any attachments unlocked i do have an mp40 in my armory and this is called the shredder you can look at the weapon details and it already has some attachments on it and the great thing about this is that you can still use this blueprint and it will still level up the weapon as needed so that's one little tip that you should be aware of in case you just don't want to start off from scratch with just a bare weapon you could check to see if you have any blueprints unlocked and this is going to be very helpful as well for standing a chance in these gunfights because obviously everybody hates it when they start off from scratch while everyone else that they're going against actually has some attachments so same thing with the stg 44 you have some different blueprints here in the armory with of course different attachments and you are also able to take off certain attachments as well if you don't really like it or if you feel like it's not necessary like taking off the optic of this stg 44 blueprint by the way this is a good example of just what you can do to customize it while still having some useful attachments here and also focusing on the lower level weapons allows you to just get more familiar with weapons how they work and just getting used to handling the weapon overall so that's why it's good to just stick to one or two weapons at a time depending on what category you're choosing all right so as far as perks go you want to do your absolute best to grind all the way to level 36 because unlocking
hunting ghosts should be your main priority because you're going to realize that in most of your matches, enemies are constantly calling in those UAVs and you're going to be exposed on the minimap and that's going to lead to you dying a lot. But trust me, once you unlock that ghost perk and you put it on, you're going to be dying a lot less. And that's obviously the goal. So ghost perk, make it a priority to try to level up as fast as possible and get these ghost perk. Now, another good perk would definitely be ninja. Obviously, this keeps your footsteps silent. So that's something you can use in the meantime, or you can use fortified or you can use fortified or survival training in the meantime while you're leveling up in the ranks. These are actually all pretty solid perks here that I would recommend using. As far as perk two goes, radar is definitely a crutch perk in my opinion, mainly because it says enemies appear on your minimap when they fire an unsilenced weapon. So when you're leveling up through the ranks, usually people don't have their silence attachments unlocked. So having this radar perk on is going to help you locate enemies visually on the minimap when they're firing their weapon. And that's going to help making decisions easier for you on which directions to push on the minimap. So the more visual cues you have, the better and the better the result it will be in hopefully getting more streaks. Now in the perk three category, of course, using double time is going to be one of your only choices for a while. But the main thing that you should grind for is the scavenger perk. This is pretty much a basic Call of Duty perk here where it allows you to replenish your ammo over enemies that have died. So this is huge so that you can stay using the same weapon and without having to sacrifice using a field upgrade such as the ammo crate to use that to replenish your ammo. So speaking of field upgrades here, let's go ahead and take a look at them really quickly. So here's the supply box. This is most likely going to be something you're going to be using as you rank up. Now, one thing that's going to be the goal to unlock is going to be the field mic. So as soon as you get the field mic, this is going to be what you want to unlock, mainly because it's going to show you enemy movement in real time on the minimap wherever you decide to place it. So this is just going to help you stay alive a lot longer as well as locate enemies. And it's going to help you make better decisions moving forward throughout the map because you know exactly where opponents are. All right, so next up, I want to talk about how camo challenges work in this game. So it's pretty standard. You can either go for multiplayer camos or go for zombie camos. And as you can see here, they do have descriptions on what you need to do in order to accomplish a specific challenge to unlock a specific camo. So for example, in zombies, you need to get a total of 4,000 eliminations to unlock the hydrosphere camo if this is a camo you're interested in. So this is basically just killing 4,000 zombies in zombie mode. Now, taking a look at multiplayer, the same thing applies here. So for this one, you need to get eliminations and a total of 400 to get this unlocked. And then for surgical, you need to get some headshots for this type of camo and for and then for multi kills and then for multi kills, you need to get 50 total to be able to unlock this type of camo right here. And also you notice it shows that you get 5000 XP rewarded. So this is definitely a way to help you level up faster as well. And then moving on here, we have the reptilian. We got to get five kills without dying a total of 30 times. And then Deadeye, you got to get long range kills a total of 100 times. And as you see, as you level up here up to level 50, it's going to show you, it's going to unlock and show you what you need to do in order to unlock the Wildcat camos. Now, as soon as you complete all the camo challenges, you're going to see this completionist. That is what's going to help you unlock the gold camo just by doing all the camo challenges for this specific weapon. And once you complete camo challenges for all weapons in its respective category, you're going to be able to unlock diamond camo. Also, moving on to the challenges tab here, this is actually really nice. You do get a nice organized list view of all the camel challenges that you still need to complete, as well as how much XP you're going to get out of it. All right, so when it comes to leveling up faster, there are several ways to do this. But one of the most common ways to get this done is to do some challenges. So if you're in your main menu here and you scroll over to your challenges, you literally have all the challenges that you're able to do. And you can go ahead and click on one. And for this example, you got to destroy an enemy field upgrade five times and this will grant you 1000 xp destroy an enemy lethal kill streak five times you get another 1000 xp so on and so forth so this is pretty straightforward you can even go to boot camp you can complete some challenges there get even more xp and this will ultimately help you level up now as far as game modes go this year it's a little bit different i recommend playing some tdm domination or hardpoint those are all great game modes to play on to level up and if you can play on hardcore mode that's going to be a lot more preferable 
vulnerable because enemies will die faster and obviously that's going to require less effort on your end as far as gunfights go now what's brand new in vanguard that is going to help tremendously as far as leveling up a lot faster is this filter feature right here and among these filters we have tactical assault and blitz so the further to the right that you go here uh the more opponents you will be facing and the faster your pacing will be so obviously if you're trying to level up a lot faster then you should definitely play blitz because you're going to get a lot more frequent engagements you know versus something like just playing tactical you're, it's going to take you a lot longer to find some opponents and assault is a pretty good happy medium and you can even purposely filter out which game modes that you want to play so like i said team deathmatch domination or hardpoint most people will tell you oh play search and destroy it's going to help you level up a lot faster you're going to get a lot of xp but for beginners it's just not practical because most people can't even barely get a few kills in search and destroy and you're just going to be sitting there wasting your time waiting for the next round to start while you're spectating and that's not going to be enjoyable so i definitely recommend team deathmatch domination and hardpoint and either playing on assault or blitz game mode you're gonna have a really insanely crazy time and also try to play on hardcore if you're able to so that you can kill enemies a lot faster and the pacing will go much quicker and you're going to result in getting more xp and last but not least let's talk about some general tips on how to improve especially if you're a beginner so the first few days you're mostly just trying to get comfortable you're learning how the maps work the map flow points of entry lines of sight all of these things are very important especially knowing the spawns and how different weapons work which weapon fits your play style whether you like to rush or you like to hang back and play a little bit slower and then you'll slowly make those adjustments over time it's all about time that you put into the game into it just learning how everything works now one piece of advice that i do have is if you have some friends you should definitely play in a party because it's going to give you a lot more information about what's going on in the map and that's going to help you feed more information into your mind and then the next time you hop on you're going to learn from those mistakes that you possibly made and then you're going to apply that knowledge and do a lot better the next time also another good tip is to stick to the outskirts of the map because it's a lot more predictable to get into gunfights when you are sticking to the outskirts of the map versus just going straight down the middle and rushing mindlessly you're gonna get yourself into a lot of situations where you're either gonna be outnumbered or you're gonna be put in a situation where you're just in a bad position so obviously the faster you sprint around the map mindlessly the less time you have to think and make good decisions so it's best to just stick to the outskirts of the map that way you can get into more predictable gunfights fights and have more time to think and engage in gunfights and which should result in a lot higher streaks staying alive a lot longer as well so hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video if you did make sure to leave a like it shows me i'm doing something right and i will continue to deliver these kind of videos to you guys and make sure to subscribe to make your way back to the channel we'll be creating vanguard content all year long make sure to subscribe turn on notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video Yo, if you guys are always on your computer all day or you like to game for long sessions, definitely check out GamerAdvantage.com for these blue light blocking glasses, quite literally the best blue light glasses that you can ever find on the market. Make sure to check out GamerAdvantage.com and just learn more about it, man. There's so many benefits to keeping your eyes nice and healthy. You won't feel that strain at the end of the day and you'll go to sleep like a baby at the end of the day and that's the best part. You won't feel tired at all. Definitely check out GamerAdvantage.com. Use code TURBO at checkout.